Hi, today I'm going to show you how to extend the life, maybe even double the life, of a brand new set of headphones. Now here's your brand new set of headphones. It's the in-ear type of headphones, but anything with a small plug will work. Now the place where these usually break is not the part that plays in your ear, but the place that these things usually go bad is actually right here at the plug where it attached where the wire attaches to the rigid part of the plug because it gets the most wear and tear and before you know it the wire is broken here and even though these things are still perfectly good it doesn't work because it's not connecting to your device so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little piece of reinforcement right over here now you can actually just take plain electrical tape and wrap it around a few times uh, right over here on the joint and that'll certainly work for a while. The tape tends to unwind after a while and if you carry it in your pocket it picks up lint and stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a little piece of rigid plastic heat shrink tubing right over here in order to reinforce it. So what we're going to need is our brand new headphones. We're going to need some heat shrink tubing. Usually comes in an assortment. You can buy it um, in uh, in individual pieces too in some places. This is from Radio Shack and has a nice assortment of colors and shapes and um, some are thicker than others. The piece that I'm using today is uh, clear plastic and it's just a little bit thicker than the actual piece. You want to start out with something that is just a little little bit thicker and you can see that that fits pretty tightly and that's going to be good because the heat shrink tubing only shrinks so much and you want a very snug fit. Um, but if you like one of the other colors, you could certainly use that too. You're also going to need some scotch tape or adhesive tape. I guess I shouldn't uh, use a brand name. You're going to need a razor or something to cut with. Maybe uh, uh, sharp scissors if you're careful. And you're going to need some kind of a lighter. This one happens to be a torch lighter and it's very accurate. But any sort of uh, lighter, you could probably even use matches. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with our heat shrink tubing and we're going to cut a segment maybe about an inch and a half to two inches long and just carefully cut through that. I'm going to use the razor blade since it's here but you can certainly use scissors. And then I'm going to take the scotch tape and just take a little piece and actually rip that in half to make a narrow strip. And then I'm going to take this narrow strip and just wrap that once around the middle of the rigid section. Now you may wonder why I'm doing that. See, we can just wrap it all the way around. You may wonder why I'm doing that. And the reason is that this is very smooth. And when we put the heat shrink tubing on it, first it'll be very, very tight and it'll fit snugly. But after we've had it for a while, the heat shrink tubing may flex and stretch a little bit and it may slide up that smooth surface. However, when we put the plastic tape on and I put the tape on that narrow strip so it starts here, it creates a sharp little edge of tape and that's going to help the, sh uh, the tubing when it shrinks to bite down really tightly around that and hold on firmly so you won't have this rigid piece sliding up and not working for you. So, we've got a little piece of plastic tape that starts about the middle of the rigid section. We have our jack ready to go. Now we take the tubing and we slip it right over. And you'll notice, on this at least, it's already pretty snug to where the, uh, the plastic is. Now, I'm going to put it on and I'm going to have it projecting over the edge a little bit, maybe about an eighth of an inch. Uh, that's a couple of millimeters. And then I'm going to take the lighter and just very, very gently, from a few inches away, begin to apply heat and you'll see that almost immediately it shrinks. Now you want to be careful not to heat the wire too much because you don't want to burn through that. Now heat shrink tubing, the diameter shrinks as you can clearly see but the length does not shrink very much. So you want to go all the way around it and just gently stroke it with that flame from a distance and again matches will do a very good job on this as well or a regular lighter but I kind of like this cigar torch because it's just a little a little bit easier to control accurately. And you want to be careful, of course, not to burn your fingers either. And it, this actually becomes a little bit sticky as it heats. Some do, some don't, I guess. 
And that's now pretty darn smug, snug, as you can see. Maybe it's smug too, I don't know. And then, blow on it for a second, let it cool. Uh, the tubing down by the wire probably won't shrink tightly enough to really wrap tightly around the wire, but that's okay because you just want a rigid section to reinforce this and prevent it from flexing right there where it meets the hard part because that's the strongest part. So we'll wait a minute for this to cool, and as it cools it begins to stiffen a little bit. It's not nearly as flexible as it was when it was hot. But it is pretty tight around that area. Now I'm going to take this razor and I'm going to just carefully cut away the plastic that extends over the edge because obviously you can't fit it into your device if it's got this little piece of plastic hanging off the edge. And that just took a second and I think that's done. And with the help of a handy dandy fingernail we can pry that off. Looks like I might have missed one little area. There we are. And this, you can see, is quite snug at one end and wide at the other. And now, the plastic reinforcement comes right up to the edge, and that's going to be very snug, and it's tightly uh, constricted around that little piece of plastic, so that'll keep it from sliding up the wire for a while anyway. Maybe a couple of months from now it may start to slide up. You can just put another little piece of plastic on and jam it back down. That'll create a little friction. Now at this end you'll see there's a little flare here. I didn't um, bring the flame all the way up because I was holding that end with my fingers. And a little more carefully now I'm going to take the razor and just cut around that edge to get rid of this little bit here. I'm going to be careful not to cut into the wire because that would ruin the headphones. And I'm just carefully cutting and turning the plastic and not the razor blade. And you can see it cuts almost all the way through. I missed a little spot there again. And I'm not going to move the blade. I'm going to, oh, well, I'm going to saw slightly, but mostly I'm just moving the, uh, moving the plastic. And that came right away, and I didn't touch the wire. And now to remove this little piece, I'm carefully going to slit it, keeping the sharp edge away from the wire. And even though it's cooled, it's still a little gummy. In an hour or two, it'll probably be quite stiff and quite hard, but still a little flexible. And um, that is going to protect maybe even double the life of these headphones. And so there we are. Very professional looking, Very actually it's already getting very stiff now. And that stiffness is going to protect the wire because as it flexes back and forth when you carry it around with you, instead of all that flex happening at this one place where it meets the plug, that flex is going to be spread out across the wire. And a very gradual flex like that is not going to harm the wire nearly as much as when it, it flexes very acutely over there. So give it a try and you'll find that it, uh, it can extend the life of uh, new headphones considerably. If they're old it'll help a little bit but if the damage has already been done there's only so much you can do. Anyway, that's uh, one great way to use shrink tubing and uh, hope that's been of help.